Just think, Miley, you're you're wearing a creeper jacket and you're in a mine. <laughs> mm, that better be careful. <laughs> yeah, just don't let her explode. Yeah. I think Miley's still creepy. Are you are you still nervous? A little. A little. So yesterday we went on a family outing for Dylan's birthday. Where did we go? Salt mines. Yeah, we went to the salt mines in Hutchison, Kansas. So I have to admit, when we first got there, I was extremely nervous about going in. Weren't you? Yeah. I was very nervous because, um, oh, the week or two prior to that, they have they had been having some earthquakes around Hutchison and so going down into that mine which is a 650 feet down into the earth is not a place that I really want to be if there's an earthquake but um, I figured well if it wasn't safe they probably wouldn't let us in and then another thing that made it just a little bit on the creepy side was that the day before we went, they had the Paranormal Society there, and they were doing um, <laughs> tours and stuff like that. And so I was just a little bit freaked because I didn't want them to disturb the ghosts and make them angry and... <laughs> Who knows what they would do once we were down there, but luckily there were no earthquakes and we didn't run into any angry ghosts or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when we got there, um, we got to look around the museum, the building a little bit while we waited. And then they had us go into a room and we watched a short video on safety and all of that and what to kind of expect when we go down into the mine. Once we were done with that, they had us go into this room and we actually all had to put on a hard hat and we went in to the elevator and they have like a double decker elevator and each section can hold I think it was 15 people 15? 15 people and so we were like one of the first people on so we, we went on there and then uh, we had to wait for them to load the other 15 people in the other deck and then we went down and as I said before, that was like 650 feet down. It's a long ways down, isn't it? Yep. They told us on the way down that they would not have any lights in there at all. And um, the reason for that is because back in the day when the miners went down, they for light they used to put candles with reflectors on their hats. And um, so they wouldn't light the candles or anything before they got on the elevator because they were afraid they might burn themselves and stuff like that. So they would always ride down the elevator in pure, complete darkness. And until you go down into a mine like that, you have never seen complete darkness. I can't remember the term that they call it, but um, it's, so, it's darkness that your eyes can't even adjust to. You can't see anything but just pitch black. And so Miley was a little bit nervous about that because she's not, she doesn't like dark very well. No, I don't. Once we got down there, it was um, very, very cool, though. It was kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. How would you describe it when you first walked in there? I don't know. It was just a little bit, it was cool, but yet kind of eerie wasn't it? They kind of had the the lights on to where you could see, but you know, if you looked beyond the light, you know, you, you knew that there was just endless darkness in there. So you're having fun? Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> Ooh, it's smooth. This is what they find out.
Then a little bit later we came upon this great big massive piece of salt that we could all touch and feel and you know that was really cool. It was really smooth. It's probably just because a lot of people touched it and they smoothed it out too. Oh, it's so smooth. Yeah. It's really weird how smooth it is. Well, I'm sure it's probably smooth from years and years of touch. But, but I think it's weird how clear it is in spots. It says to mm -hmm. preserve the cables, don't touch the walls, and don't touch that salt. Well, I didn't read that sign right away. The walls don't feel like this. Oh, they don't? No, they don't. They're rough? They're rough. Ah. <laughs> Just so you know. Here we are. Yeah, uh, underneath Airport Road. Oh, wow. At that time, Miley was still pretty nervous, <laughs> weren't you? Me? It took you a little while to get used mm -hmm. to the whole, the whole thing. Just think, Miley, you're, you're wearing a creeper jacket and you're in a mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that better be careful. <laughs> Yeah, just don't let her explode. Yeah. I think Miley's still creeped. Are you, are you still nervous? A little. A little. As we walked further down into the mine, we came upon um, a, some vehicles that they had used back in the day. They had them on display. And so it was really interesting because when they took them apart and took them down there, they only took the pieces that they really needed, so some of them didn't even have, like, um, doors. hoods or doors or what else did they not have? They were just pretty stripped bare. Miley, a little pickup. Is that what, yeah, that's what Burke was asking. These cars were taken apart and brought down to piece by piece in the elevator thing. Really? Yep. As you can tell, they put it back together very well. And then next we saw the machines that they used to cut away the layers of salt. I can't remember what those machines were called. Can you? Anyway, they, you know, they put them in and they'd kind of like saw away at the bottom layer of it. And then they had drills that they would drill holes into the salt in different places. And then they would um, put dynamite in there and then basically blow it up. And that's how they would get the salt out of there. And then the next really cool part, at least for me, was that we came upon a display of Mike Rowe. I'm a huge fan of his, and he actually went to the mines and he did a Dirty Jobs show on it once. And anyway, they had a cardboard cut out of him and then the car that he had rode in or used during the show, and it was really, really cool, so... I was pretty excited to see that.
Okay, and then next after that was a display of trash that they had found down in the mine. And this is really, really interesting. I think this is one of the most interesting parts of the whole tour, at least for me, was the fact that the trash was still preserved from back in the day. So you could actually like look at all the packages and see what they were like and everything. What's this? The, just the trash from back in the 1950s. And then there's the old... Um Gum. Oh, that I remember that gum wrapper. <laughs> I think it's interesting. There's some potato chips, for ten cents. Next, we looked at the shuttle cars, and that was really interesting. That was um, the thing that they used to shuttle the salt to the, the railway. Okay, that's two different machines. Look at how close your head is to the... I mean, if you were to sit this thing and drive it... Yeah, you'd have to watch your Whoa. head. Whoa. It's making me start to get claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Is it lower? Oh, there's the driver's seat right there. Yeah. Back over here. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, that is really weird. What is this? This is just from the blast. Oh, this is what it looks like after it has been blasted. Uh -huh. Cool. So let's see. Was the do you, did you like the Salt Mine Express? Like riding on the train? Yeah. Was that one of your Favorite. I think it's cool how the ceiling fell. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> anyway, um, next we rode on the Salt Mine Express. And that was a train that took us around to various little displays they had. And they gave us a little information and a bit of history on it. And it was really, really cool. until they wore out the back of the glove. Stories have been told that Mr. Carey, the owner of the Carey Salt Mine, was always after the miners to pick up their trash and not contaminate the salt. Apparently, a miner rolled up these gloves and stuffed them in a blasting hole because that's where we found them 60 years later when we opened this part of the museum. Everything that comes down in the mine stays in the mine. If you look at the lit area, you'll see that this is even true of mining trash. Now we know this area was mined in the 1950s, and we found many name brand products in this trash pile from that time period, some of which are still around today. There are a couple of things we noticed here. One, there's a calendar from 1953 on the floor by the rocks on the left. And two, when we found it over by the pillar, the gray trash can was empty. Mm -hmm. We consider all these items to be artifacts, which only proves one person's trash is another's treasure. In case you were wondering, trash isn't the only thing miners left underground. Apparently, this area was used as a restroom. No fancy porta pots here, and they weren't very careful with the toilet paper either. And then after we got done with the Salt Mine Express, we went on the dark ride. Remember the wall falling down and the floor coming up and all that stuff? That was on the dark ride. 
Oh, the wall was also coming up? No, on too. the dark. No, on the dark ride. That's where the the, the thing was coming off. The wall? Mm -hmm. No, it was on the train. <laughs> Are you really sure about that? Yes, I am. I could have swore that on the dark ride is where we saw the ceiling was where the no. room the fell. Yeah, it was. It was because I remember on the dark ride we got into this one area where it was really narrow. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I kind of got a little claustrophobic. And then they showed where the ceiling had fallen down. The room where the ceiling had fallen down. And then we went on. And then they stopped <laughs> right beside it. And then that's where the um, uh, floor came up. It was on the train! <laughs> no, it was on the dark <laughs> ride! <laughs> <laughs> we need to go there again just so I can show. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> so anyway, I guess we can't remember it right, but <laughs> I think I'm right. I think. I'm so anyway, whether that actually, whether we actually saw where the ceiling had fallen on the train ride or on the dark ride, we are at differences here. But um, they showed us where over time the layers of salt will kind of like separate. And they've actually had spots where the ceiling has fallen in. And they went and they showed us this area that that had happened in. And that was really interesting. But I was so glad to like be kind of out of that area because it made me just a little bit nervous. Imagine what it sounded like when they all fell. I know. That had to be pretty noisy. I wonder if anyone was down there in the mine somewhere. I don't know. I did not get any of that on video, and I wish I had, but the lighting was just so bad in there that you really couldn't have seen, seen much anyway. And then another area that we went into is where the floor was actually lifting up. And um, over time, that happens too. And they explained it as the earth, whenever you make a hole or something into the earth, it wants to try to repair itself and so um, they say that over time the floor will um, eventually start to to raise up and so I thought that was really interesting um, what was I going to say? there's something I was going to say oh and the wall started coming off on the train right too oh yeah that's right too they had areas where the the salt was like starting to peel away from the wall and they said like in the active mine parts and stuff like that that they monitor that and um go ahead and take those out before they actually fall so that way people don't get injured so anyway um on the dark ride the reason they call it the dark ride is because they stopped back there in one of the tunnels and they t completely turned off all the lights so you could see nothing but <laughs> pitch black. That was pretty weird, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And that definitely <laughs> would not be a place that I would want to get lost in without a light, that's for sure. I wouldn't even want to get lost with a light in that place. But anyway... Um, so next we stopped and they had a big pile of salt and they had these little baggies and we could get out and pick out some salt to take with us if we wanted to. Oh wow, these are pretty. I like those. I don't know if this one can fit in. That's some of that red salt. Got your piece, huh? Your piece doesn't quite fit in your bag. No. He said pieces can be about palm size, though. <laughs> Brooke's saying it's not my palm, but it's, it's about it's, there. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I had a bigger piece picked out, but I really like this one better, so we'll go with this one. Uh, it's, it's really spark it's like sparkle one. Sparkle one. <laughs> and here's, here's some of the pieces that we picked out. A couple pieces broke off mine. Here's mine! 
Well, they got a big piece. It's really cool because you can see all the sediments and stuff in there. There's also a bunch. And there's a bunch of dark spots in there. Those are mine. Like that one has a lot of mud in it. So does this one. And then this one has mud and red in it. Mm hmm. And then there's just a completely clear small piece, too. Like I got a little tiny piece right here. It's super duper salty. I wonder why. <laughs> Wouldn't be because it's salt, would it? I don't think so. <laughs> so after we got in with all the rides, um, we went and looked at all of the displays they had. And um, what they do is they store movie props down there because um, the salt kind of helps to preserve them and the temperature down there is always at a constant 60 degrees and there's no humidity or anything like that down there. And See they have, they store a lot of, of memorabilia, movie memorabilia here in the mine. Uh, the, salt, the salt attracts the moisture, so the moisture stays away from all of this stuff. So this is actual, actual movie props, right? Yeah. Bars from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What's this? Just movie, more movie props. Yeah. I never watched this movie, so I can't tell you what it is. I haven't either. That is an old computer. Yeah, yeah. It, it stores. It says it's data storage machine or something like that. That's what it's called. Nano up there. Yeah. Storage is 8,000 megabytes. It's about $230. This computer storage is 64 megabytes, which is like a GameCube memory card. Uh -huh. Costs $91,000 back in the day. Or... Dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. There's Dorothy from the Twister movie. As we were leaving the mine, we came upon a huge map of the whole mine, and that was really interesting. It actually showed exactly where Mike Rowe was at when they filmed Dirty Jobs. And so we looked at that, and then we compared that to where we were at, and that whole entire mine stretches for at least a couple of miles. It's pretty huge. Mike Rowe was right there. This, this is where we're at, right here. Me. That is how big the mine is. That is yeah, ginormous. It's several miles. I think it's how it's all in square honeycomb, mm -hmm. you know, waffle shape like that. Let's count up how many columns there are. A G. And then make a, a that a way, and then how many columns there are. And okay, mom's okay. recording it so that way we can do it. But see, we're going to have to go over and down and then. Probably cut through and then over and then down. Yeah. Yeah. Complete darkness. Yeah, I'm sure that's all dark. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So after being down there and actually looking around at all the cool stuff and learning more about the mining and everything like that, it was actually pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. And it wasn't as scary as what we thought it would be. No. And so we actually want to go back again. 
Just so that way I can prove Miley wrong. I want to prove you wrong. The where yeah. the part where they showed where the ceiling fell, it happened on the dark ride, not the train ride, okay? It happened on the train ride. So anyway, if you are ever traveling through Kansas and you would like to do something kind of fun and interesting, we highly recommend that you visit the salt mines in Hutchison, Kansas.